Welcome to another video. It's been a while we've done some calculus one, especially taking derivatives from first principles. And I used to think I already have this video, but I noticed from someone's comment today that I should make this video. And in my head, I thought I already have that. So I searched my channel and lo and behold, there is nothing like the square root of x, just that. I have one over square root of x, but not square root of x, I think. So, and that's the problem. I gotta do it, because somebody needs it. Okay, so whatever you see me do in this video is how you should approach um, derivatives from first principles. Start with the definition. Do the algebra that is possible. When it involves a radical, you wanna do some rationalization. If it doesn't involve a radical, just do factoring or some manipulation you can do, but you have to do the algebra. If you're ready, let's get into it. The first and the most important thing about this kind of exercise is you know the definition of a derivative. Okay, you must know the definition. The definition is that if f of x is a function that is differentiable, I'm not going to write that part, then we know that the derivative of x, just a general derivative, is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Every calculus one student must know this formula by heart and be able to use it for any function that is not too crazy. On this channel, there's a bunch of um, stuff I've done with this formula, but today our focus is gonna be on the square root of x. So what does this definition mean? It means the function you're dealing with, you want to find the derivative of the square root of x, you're not going to use the power rule, you're going to use this definition and take the limit and you get the same answer. So what do we do? Here we go. We're going to say that f of x in this case is the square root of x. So we can go here and say that f prime of x by this definition is the limit as h goes to 0 is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of the function but instead of it being the function of x it's going to be the function of x plus h so wherever you see x go put x plus h there so this is going to be square root of x plus h minus f of x. Remember we said f of x is square root of x, so it's just going to be minus the square root of x divided by h. That's it. This is all you need to be able to write from the beginning. If you can write this, the rest is just algebra. Okay? Remember the definition and remember how to use it. Replace x with x plus h anywhere you see x on the first part. The second part, leave it as the original function that you're trying to differentiate. So at this point, what can we do? Well, there is no algebraic simplification you can do here because this is a radical, this is a radical. You can't subtract two um, radical functions unless you know their values. So what you can do is rationalize, okay? Because the radical is on top, you're going to rationalize the top, but whatever you do to the top, you also do to the bottom. So what we're saying is f prime of x, is now going to be the limit. Remember, you see I keep writing the limit. Whenever you do a limit problem, always write the limit until you get to the end. And I'll tell you when the end comes. Okay, so this is gonna be h goes to zero of the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x divided by h. Now rationalizing the top means you're gonna be multiplying the top by the conjugate of the top. Now the conjugate of the top is something that looks exactly like this, but the sign in the middle is switched. If it was a minus, it becomes a plus. If it's a plus, it becomes a minus. So if you rationalize this, you're gonna be multiplying by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x divided by itself. So 
Remember, whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. That's what we're doing. So we haven't changed anything because this is 1, right? Nice. Now see the next thing that happens. We're going to be multiplying this top by this, and we're going to be multiplying this bottom by this, and see what ter it turns out to be. We have f prime of x, which is this function, the derivative of the function will now be, let's multiply this by this. Now, I don't want you to waste time. This is what I always explain to students. Watch this. The square root of, let's call this um, m minus the square root of n. If you multiply it by the square root of m plus the square root of n, what you will observe when you foil this out is that your answer is just end up, is going to end up becoming m minus n. That's the answer to this. It is usually the square of the first term minus the square of the second term whenever you do this. So whether this was a plus and then this is a minus or this was a minus, this is a plus, this is what you always get. The square of the first term minus the square of the second term. And remember when you square a radical function you get rid of the square root sign the same thing here, you get rid of the square root sign. So what you're going to have next is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, if we square this, we're going to get just x plus h. If we square this, we're going to get just x. And that's it. That's what you have on top. Now, what do you have under? Well, you cannot do anything to these, so you just leave it. Always leave the bottom alone. Always. Never touch the bottom. Okay? So what you have is going to be the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. See, I have multiplied the top, I have left the bottom alone. What do you think this is going to be? Let's go one more step. This is going to be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, this is x plus h minus x. Well, this x will cancel this x, so you have just h left on top. And what do you have under? Under here, we're going to have h multiplied by, oh, we still have this, the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Nice. Let's clean this up. So from here, you see that this h will cancel this h. So if we do this cancellation, cha, cha, what do we have left? You're going to have f prime of x is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of what's on, on top is just 1. And what's under is going to be the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Now, I told you I was going to tell you when the end comes, this is the end. Why is it the end? Well, we, we were having a problem with this h being in the bottom because we couldn't plug in h equals 0. Because it would have made the denominator equal to 0 and the top two would have been 0 at every point until we got here. And in fact, that's always the story when you do this. The top and bottom will always be zero anytime you plug in from the beginning. So you can't plug in. You have to keep working until you can plug in h equals zero. Now we've gotten to the point because there's no more h on top that's going to make this zero. And there's no h in the bottom also, which is a good thing. So what do we have? Plug in h equals zero. What do you have next? Now, you don't need to write the limit anymore because you're going to plug in h equals 0 here. It becomes 1 over square root of x plus 0 plus the square root of x. Well, guess what? x plus 0 is x. So what you have in the bottom here, f prime of x is equal to 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x. Well. We know that you can add the square root of x to the square root of x. You're just going to get two of them, okay? So you have 1 over 2 square root of x. And this is the derivative of the square root of x from first principles. And if you don't want to use first principles because you are now a big boy or a big girl, well, you can as well use the power rule, and this is what you still end up with. Never stop learning. Those are stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.